Well, it seems like he's fallen off his high horse. Let's begin. Well, you know, it looks like that Sadiq Khan has suddenly discovered the art of apologising. I mean, you know, who would have thought that the London mayor could utter the words, Really sorry. It's almost as rare, isn't it, as, I don't know, spotting a unicorn riding a unicycle down Oxford Street. But let's just deep dive into this ULES Ultra Low Emission Zone showdown. Tory politician Mr Fortune dared to inquire when Khan would release reports on the ULES expansion. And things, let's just say, got a bit heated, to say the least. I mean, Khan, I'm guessing the self-proclaimed champion of environmentalism, assured us that Transport for London would repeat what they did with the original ULES scheme. If you think about it, it's a bit like saying, I'll tell you what, we'll make the same mistake twice and just hope that no one notices. But here's the thing, I mean, if ULES was genuinely, genuinely about saving the environment and improving air quality, then wouldn't it have just been far simpler to just pedestrianise a few areas from the beginning and then, I don't know, expand a bit more? I mean, why stop at vehicle emissions when you can, I don't know, ban humans from breathing altogether? I mean, picture this, London as some sort of ghost town with tumbleweeds rolling through the deserted streets. Now, that's the sort of utopia that I'm guessing that they'd probably want, isn't it? But it's just something that I don't really get about this whole ULIS stuff altogether. I mean, presumably he's saying that he's doing it for people's health and to make sure our young children and things like that don't breathe in toxic fumes or risk anyone's lives. But the thing is, if I've got a massively polluting vehicle and decide to pay Sadiq Khan £12.50 to drive through the city, then, I don't know, presumably the sick and dying can um, go F themselves, I'm guessing. I don't know. Is that why he thinks? Because I can't really see why, if it is all about saving people's lives and protecting them, why he lets in these polluting vehicles at all. Something tells me it's a bit more about money. But let's not forget the witty banter between Khan and Mr Fortune. Khan likened their exchange to being back at sixth form. Now, Mr Fortune's comeback, did you talk to handsome and intelligent men at sixth form as well? Which I'm guessing Khan didn't like too much because he then said, for somebody who reads a lot, that ain't half thick. Well, you know, I could be wrong, but isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? Exactly what you said. Yeah. And then I'm telling you what they did last time and you're saying you didn't say that. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Chair, it's like being Thank you, at, Chair. It's like being back at sixth form. There are better Why? debaters there. Did you talk to handsome and intelligent men at sixth form as well? <laughs> I mean, honestly, Chair, for someone who reads a lot, he ain't half thick, isn't he? Um, listen, no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. listen. I would. That's, uh, that's, that's when uh, I know you're in trouble. I, when you start getting personal, I, that's when I know you're in trouble. So, I, remember, I, remember I, that you're the mayor of London and you're, you're a grown man, well, nearly, you're, you're, you're a grown man and you should <laughs> I mean, act accordingly. This, I remind this, uh, the members that I don't, I don't like it when friends, we use this is personal abuse. Can I just, before I answer your question, can I just apologise unreservedly to Peter Fawcett for calling him thick? Uh, I'm very sorry for saying that. I've reflected on that and I should not have said that. It's not appropriate for me to have said that, and I'm very sorry. Well, you know, perhaps he could actually be a bit sorry for you, Les, too, but, you know, I could be wrong, but I'm guessing their cars are more environmentally friendly than what they were, I don't know, about 100 years ago. But anyway, Mr Fortune said afterwards that Londoners deserve so much better than a mayor whose only recourse to scrutiny is to skirt the question and dish out some low-bar insults. Well, let's just talk a bit about Amazon's wild ride with Jeremy Clarkson and the roller coaster of drama that they've been going through. You know, it kind of looked like Amazon was trying to cosy up with all the lefties. I mean, of course, at the time, I remember them saying they decided to cut ties with Jeremy Clarkson after his Game of Thrones reference, I think it was, with Meghan Markle, which, if I remember rightly, triggered a Twitter mob that rivaled the Battle of Winterfell. Now, clearly, they thought they were joining the cool club, didn't they? But hold on a minute, because it seems that, as, you know, as time has passed and reality has struck Amazon like a lightning bolt, they've realised that actually Clarkson's Farm is one of their best and most popular programmes. And people are not actually presumably subscribing to Amazon because of that. So maybe, just maybe, they've decided to hop off their high horse and think about those precious profits. It's almost as if, isn't it, they woke up one morning and thought to themselves, hmm, you know what is better than virtue signaling? Money and lots of it. Because now the news is out that Clarkson's Farm might actually be getting a fourth series. And Amazon apparently is in active talks about it as well. I mean, sure, you know, they say that the deal is not finalised, but come on, on the signs are there, aren't they? I mean, the show's return is highly requested, and you know what they say, money talks louder than Twitter mobs. And of course, let's not forget the possibility of another plot twist. So, but, you know, of course, in the meantime, while we wait for the drama to unfold in 2024 at Diddley Squat Farm, let's all raise a glass to viewing figures, because if it wasn't for them, I'm guessing there wouldn't be any talks at all. But anyway, the article goes a bit further and says that, thankfully, the working relationship between Amazon and Jeremy has seemingly improved and has led to, le to them allegedly being in active talks about a new series. However, fans shouldn't get ahead of themselves 
as the outlet also reported that there could yet be another plot twist. But the good news is that ongoings at Diddley Squat Farm are currently being filmed and fans can look forward to seeing the drama unfold at some point in the future. But if the agreement is made, then of course the cameras will continue capturing the ups and downs of Jeremy and his trusty helper Caleb Cooper running the farm at the stunning Cotswold location for Series 4. Well, do you know what? Sir Keir Starmer, the Labour leader, has recently unveiled his grand plan to tackle the small boat crisis, and Nigel Farage, like a lot of us, is not impressed. In fact, he declared a very, very big mistake. And if anything, it's kind of like a boxer match, isn't it, where one fighter brings a feather duster to the ring, and that fighter would be Keir Starmer. But just what is Starmer's master plan? Well, to be honest, it is treating people smugglers like terrorists, which in itself doesn't sound too bad, but the bit where he's hinting at an EU returns agreement involving quotas of migrants from the bloc doesn't really fill me full of much hope. I mean, a lot of people will say it's bold, but Nigel Farage, on the other hand, insists this plan is a flop waiting to happen, and he warns it will drag Britain closer to Brussels, and of course we all know how that story will go, don't we? So in his signature style, Farage didn't really hold back on the sarcasm either. He says that today we've learned what the Labour's solution to the channel crisis, or you know, perhaps some would say channel emergency is. And Nigel, of course, couldn't resist on making the food digs either. He says this whole take a lead in Europe rhetoric has quite a familiar ring to it. And to be honest, I definitely agree with him. And it is a very slippery slope in my opinion. But of course, Keir Starmer isn't done there, is he? Because he wants to join Europol. Not Interpol, because, you know, nation state police forces cooperating together probably isn't as full as the EU's own police force, is it? But, you know, here's the thing. Even when we were EU members, we kind of avoided the EU's refugee and asylum policy like it was a bad dinner with a questionable potato salad, yet Starmer he probably wants to cosy up to Brussels and have tea with President Macron, or maybe, who knows, other things too. Along with, of course, hoping the French will play nice to stop the boats. But, you know, I just can't see that happening, because, if anything, in my opinion, it's kind of like saying, let's visit a haunted house, even though we, of course, know that it's full of ghosts. And as Farage points out, in return, we'll take a load of Mediterranean migrants, with 8,000 people landing on Lampanesia in the past three days. And to top it all off, Farage reckons this plan will even stop the boats anyway. And if anything, in my opinion, it's kind of like using a sieve to plug a leak. And he also points out that with this, we could actually end up taking more people arriving illegally from other parts of the world than we currently do. And if anything, it's kind of like trying to lose weight but buying a bigger wardrobe. Counterproductive, to say the least. But anyway, the article goes a bit further and says that Rishi Sunak claimed the proposals could result in 100,000 EU migrants coming to the UK every year. While Home Secretary Sula Braverman said the Labour leader would let the UK become a dumping ground for Europe's migrants. But of course, Sir Keir said that response was typical from the government that's completely lost control of the situation. Well, it doesn't really sound that he's going to do much better, does it? In fact, probably worse. But he also added that it's embarrassing the government is pumping out all this nonsense. I can only assume it's because they've got nothing sensible to say on the issue. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's just Keir Starmer who's made a silly move, because in this video, it appears that Aldi has just insulted every single one of their customers. 